Hey guys, I'm going to try to show you how can you connect Grafana to your Zabbix Cloud installation or let's say Zabbix Cloud node. And I'm somewhere in the middle of doing all of this process. And at this point, I've decided like, let's record a video for you so that you can learn as well. And uh, I will try to explain like what I already did. And uh, hopefully the result is going to be success so successful because to be honest, like this is the first time when I myself am trying to connect Grafana to the Zabbix in the cloud. It's uh, easy on-prem and supposedly should be easy in the cloud as well. So let's see how it goes. And uh, I have the cloud here, right? I have my node created Eastfish, that's a nano instance, and I copy pasted my password and here is the front end. So it's an empty installation without anything. And uh, we obviously also need a Grafana. like. There are even two options. You can have a Grafana installed locally somewhere at your office, at your premise. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the clouds or you might be using Grafana cloud and you still can connect it with a Zabbix cloud without any problems. But in this video, uh, what I'm doing, I have installed uh, Grafana locally on my virtual machine. And to do that, what I had to do is... Uh, run grafana through the container like this command copy paste if you have a docker i've already did it and here in the docker ps you can see that my grafana is running and it's running on the port 3000 so i can already connect it um it's on a second monitor uh there you go let's put it here so here is my grafana like blank just as my zabbix but uh, this is running on my virtual machine everything is fine and the next thing is that you actually need a zabbix data source in the same same way as you always do whenever you are trying to connect your grafana to the local installation of the zabbix and if you will go to uh where it is to the data sources click add data source you will not find a zabbix here because two reasons like first of all you need to install the plugin for the zabbix uh, by alexander and the second thing you actually need to enable it so how to uh install um the plugin uh, we need this page zabbix plugin for grafana right zabbix plugins in in the grafana labs page that's official and since like six months or something actually grafana manages this plugin not the alexander himself anymore i don't know how to stuff work internally in the grafana but at least formally it's officially supported by the grafana itself and to install it like we need to just type this command. But since we're running in a Docker, then what I had to do is Docker PS and Docker exec minus IT, then copy paste the container ID, then bash, and inside the container itself, you need to run uh, this command. So just copy paste, put it here, click enter, and you see I already have it installed, but basically you need to install it. That's just one one time, one command, click enter and it's done. Then you need to do exit, docker ps, docker restart, restart the container of your Grafana, and then the plugin is basically installed and already available. Um, what do you need to do when it's available? It's still not gonna be visible here. So if you still go to the data sources, add data sources, still no Zabbix. Uh, you need to go to the plugins and data, uh, to the plugins and search here for the Zabbix where you will find uh, Zabbix by Alexander Zobnin. And uh, it's installed, so we have an option to uninstall it, which is uh, not exactly that we, what we need to do, we just need to enable it. When the plugin is enabled, then hopefully we can go to the data sources, add a data source, search for the Zabbix, and then we need to do the configuration. So please enter the valid URL for your Zabbix frontend and and that is the endpoint of API of the Zabbix frontend so localhost slash Zabbix API underscore JSON RPC dot PHP but uh, what kind of URL do we have it's it's this one right there's uh, no magic like the node name is a part of uh, a part of address like this eastfish.zabbix.cloud uh, so we just go to the configuration copy paste your url and uh, uh what was the api json rpc.php api json rpc.php 
HTTPS, yes, no no notification, TLS setting, uh, I think we can leave it as it is right now. And uh, Zabbix connection, we will use user and a password. Of course, you can create API token through the Zabbix if you want, but just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to use the password. So uh, the username is admin and a password is hidden here. So I will just copy it and... Uh, where is my Grafana? Here, password. So additional settings, I will leave everything default. And now let's just try to test. And I really have, I hope that it's going to work because supposedly that's the only configuration that you should do. So let's just try, save and test. Uh, doesn't work. TLS failed to verify certificate has expired or is not yet valid. Um, that's because, yeah, that's skips uh, skip certificate testing there you go you will not have this problem with the certificate uh, in the Zabbix cloud that's because i'm running that in the test environment where uh, there's no https certificates apply right now so there you go the Zabbix api version is 704 next you can start to visualize data by building uh, a dashboard or by querying data in the explorer view so save and test it's saved it's working that's the only stuff that you need to do from the grafana side to connect it to your cloud node and one last thing that i want you to remember like if supposedly everything is configured as it should be but at the same time you cannot establish the connection most likely you need to go here in the access filters and don't remember uh, don't forget to add ip address or setter IP or DNS name of your Grafana server because by default Zabbix will not accept uh, Zabbix Cloud will not accept uh, uh, connections from the IP addresses or DNS names that are not mentioned here. So whitelist your Grafana server, and if you are coming from the Grafana Cloud, then you will have quite a big list of IP addresses um, that could uh, be used by the Grafana cloud, then you need to whitelist all of them. And if we talk about like to whitelist uh, what exactly, um, you basically need front end and API only. Like you don't need a server, you don't need a API and server. And just for the sake of keeping the minimal required privilege, right? The front end and API is uh, fully sufficient. So that is basically the only thing that you need to do to use the Grafana. Like I'm not going to build the dashboards right now, but uh, you can like whenever you do, you do this, uh, you're ready to go. That's uh, exactly the same stuff as a uh, local installation. So let me guys know in the comments whether or not this works uh, for you. If it doesn't, let me know what, what exactly is uh, not working as it should. I'll do my best to try to help you out and uh, just to use my time while you are still here i wanted to thank everyone again uh, for for watching and, and subscribing and liking and commenting and especially those who are also following me in the patreon uh, we have the free tier available for everyone there's also the paid one but even in the free you can get like a lot of the perks and goodies so if you want to check out you can find the link in the description other than that thank you guys for watching i hope this was useful for you and we'll definitely see you a bit later bye bye